to repay to Caesar what is, belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. You know, these words from Jesus, I think, are all very familiar to us. But not only is it a response that we expose those who sought to trap Jesus as hypocrites, but it's an invitation for all of us, I think, to live appropriately in this world with a greater view on God himself. Jesus pointed out the fallacy underlying their whole mentality. You know, for the Pharisees and Herodians, for them, only one citizenship was possible. You're either an Israelite or you're a Roman. They also had too worldly of a view of their spiritual identity as well. But Jesus pointed out a fundamental difference between the kingdom of this world and his eternal kingdom. So what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees is that the justice of true holiness means a consistent returning each thing to its proper creator or owner. The coin which is a tribute to Caesar, to Caesar, and man's immortal soul to God. In other words, you and I have been created in God's image and likeness. We need to be reminded of that over and over and over. You and I have been created in God's image and likeness. It is the human person who bears the image of the living God. And in this, and this living image of God within us signifies that we belong by right to him who made us. Just as the image on the coin signifies that it belongs to Caesar. In addition, because we are transcendent spiritual beings, this divine reflection within us means that in a certain sense, we may and must aspire to a relationship of intimacy with God. As a friend, it relates to friend. As a lover, it relates to lover. God's desire and his whole purpose in creating us in his own image is so that we might be able to relate to him, but even more than just relating to him, so that we might have union with him. And so our highest obligation in life, and one that is imposed on every man, woman, and child, regardless of nationality or citizenship, is to give ourselves back to the Creator. And Jesus, as a revelation of the Father, was inviting his audience in the gospel into this relationship of love, which they were rejecting. This relationship is meant to be sought anew each and every day for all of us. We are invited to give to God ourselves over and over and over again, each and every day. And this includes being docile, to his will, devoting our lives to him, and working for his kingdom of mercy, love, and peace. But we must always remember that this relationship with Jesus is in communion with and mediated through the church, the body of Christ. As Pope Francis cautions, there is no such thing as do-it-yourself Christians or free agents when it comes to faith. It is the church who perpetuates Christ's saving mission in the world. And like these seven liturgical sacraments which we celebrate so frequently, the church is both a sign and an instrument of God's grace. And as a sign, the church points the faithful toward communion with God and one another in this life, an eternal union with God forever in the next. And as an instrument, the church makes communion with God possible by means of the gifts given to her by Christ. What are those? Her doctrine, her laws, her sacraments. The church then is the sacrament of Christ and she makes his work of salvation visible 
and accessible to human beings. You and I, none of us, can live isolated religious lives outside the church, not if we believe that the reign of God is in our midst. You and I are called to be God's servants and instruments of Christ's love in building and advancing this kingdom. Each of us has to decide how we can participate in this mission and are called to participate in this mission. You know, the interior possessing of God's love is the basis of spirituality and at the heart of following Jesus. And it is our pathway to inner freedom and love. Lives focused on and lived for Christ brings about that true freedom. Everything else, everything else can potentially enslave us and so often does in some way. So repaying God with, with what belongs to God is called the Christian life. Jesus lived his interior life by pouring himself into his life's calling and ministry. He lived on the outside what he experienced on the inside, the Father's profound love for him. You know, we worship today at this altar, at this altar, in which Jesus continues to serve us from his divine generosity of love, made present in his living sacrifice. When you and I, when we worship at the altars of this earthly world, oftentimes we forget who we really are. So today, my friends, one, once again, we give the Lord glory and honor, and we give God, we give to God what is his by accepting who we are and whose we are.